And we are live across the interwebs. Hey, everybody, welcome to the first Project 24 webinar. Uh, we're hoping if things go well here to make this a regular feature for you. Um, in addition to the podcast and the forum and everything else we do, the blog to keep you guys updated on things, we thought it'd be kind of a cool way to um, just add information of everything that's, that's happening here. Um, hi, Ronnie from Oregon, welcome. Uh, so we want to start with just a few things that we wanted to share kind of to kick things off. And then we're going to go to questions from Project 24 members, of which we have a lot. In addition to everybody who is here live, you're welcome to ask as well. Um, so first, a few housekeeping items of things happening in Project 24. We're experiencing issues with the podcast, and we are working to fix it, but we cannot figure it out yet. Uh, we know some people are having a difficult time logging in. If you're on the iPhone, try Overcast. Most people are doing fine. It's tough because I can't recreate the issue. It's working fine for me. Um, but I know some members are having a tough time getting subscribed, so I am really sorry about that. It is on, on our end, and we're working on it. All I can say for now is keep trying a couple different podcast players. Uh, we are in a season right now. We have episodes coming out, so don't miss those. You can always listen if it doesn't work on the phone. You can always listen on Project 24. Uh, just go to the podcast and they're all there. You can listen in a browser or do that from your phone, just from the browser page. So, But I'm sorry that's happening. Uh, we're trying to figure out what's, what's going on there. Um, but what's coming up in Project 24? So we have this current season of the podcast. And I, boy, I'm kind of leaning towards getting rid of the seasons of the podcast and just making that a regular thing uh, coming out. I, I hate waiting between seasons. There's always stuff happening. Um, we also have a new course that we filmed on um, info products, uh, which is a huge course. It'll be a couple hours long, um, and that is filmed. It's being edited right now, uh, and will be coming out hopefully soon. It takes a little bit of time to get them out, but um, it is filmed and ready to go. So we're really excited to get that out. I know a lot of members of Project 24 are kind of getting to that point where you've got an audience and uh, you're looking for ways to monetize better. So um, we're definitely excited about getting that one out. After that, the next course is going to be on YouTube. Um, so we're actually going to be adding, we're not totally sure of the format, but our current plan is to add, like we have the 60 steps to get your, your, um, your income site started. Um, and we're gonna add a second 60 steps going the YouTube route. You know, uh, basically what we're doing is, you know, mostly writing on the website and a YouTube channel to promote the website. And that's kind of on the current 60 steps. But we're just seeing just incredible, incredible potential from YouTube right now. We're gonna make a separate approach to the whole thing, just flipping that where you have a website that's mostly a brochure, a place to have your affiliate links, uh, you know, it's an, you know, your info products, et cetera, and promoting it mostly with YouTube. We're just seeing incredible, incredible results with YouTube right now. And so that is gonna be a huge undertaking for us, huge, uh, but we feel very committed to getting that out to Project 24 because it's just, YouTube is just doing so well that we, we just need to be talking about it more. Okay, so that's uh, kind of what's coming up in the Project 24 in the next couple months. Um, also, uh, the theme. Oh, of course, the theme. Oh, it's, we, we are like days away uh, from it. We just keep seeing some things and then we're like, oh, we can't push it out to Project 24 yet, even for a beta until we know it's right. Um, when we put it out for the beta, we want to feel like the bugs we know of are fixed. Um, and so we're down to days, uh, but we're waiting on the developer, but should be very close. Um, and so that is going to go to, out to Project 24. We're going to call it beta for the first couple of weeks. We want to make sure, you know, just know it's brand new, but we feel very confident in it. Um, and so the Project 24 is going to get the first access to it. And then uh, when it's ready to be sold publicly, we'll announce it and stuff on YouTube. But Project 24 members get it free. You don't have to pay for the theme. Okay, uh, Content Warrior Challenge, that's not gonna be coming until the fall. Some people were asking about that. We kinda wanna keep that a twice a year thing. If we do it too often, you know, you can't put a giant push on your website every month, right? Um, 
And okay, yeah, so that's a uh, kind of a little update on what's uh, what's going on. Uh, Patrick McCoy says, um, is the theme going to force you to have a membership to Project 24? Uh, yes, so you, you'll have, obviously, you'll have a license to the theme for as long as you're a Project 24 member. Uh, that, yeah, obviously, if you're if you're paying for it, you're, you uh, yeah, that's how you're getting it for free. You you have a Project Twenty Four membership. Um, okay, great. Let's get started on some of these questions. All right, first is uh, Colt Twelve. So, say theoretically, I have a site that doesn't seem to be gaining traction. At what point should I drop the site and move on to another? Such a good question. Yeah. What What do you say to somebody like that? I mean, the short answer is. I would be hesitant to stop at all. It, and it depends on how much work you put into a site. But I mean, if you've done the keyword, research, if it's a good niche to be in, then you got to stick it out, especially overcome that barrier to entry of just the, uh, the 35 weeks of just waiting to see how Google ranks your post. Um, but in general, um, you follow the principles and just make sure you're doing the right things. But try to stick it out until you know for sure. Yeah, that's how I feel too. I feel like 99% of the time when I see somebody saying, oh, I'm not sure if this worked, I'm I'm saying, oh, don't quit yet, yeah. you know? Because like, I like what you said, like really the only reason I can see that you'd wanna quit and restart a new site is if the niche was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, if you're like something generic, uh, skateboarding, right? You know, do a lot of people skateboard? Yes. So there's enough to search volume. Um, is there money to be made? Will people pay for something in skateboarding? Sure. I'm sure we can make money there. And so there's nothing wrong with the niche. If you wrote 30 articles and they didn't take off, let's look at those articles and let's figure out what did and did not work. And then let's learn from there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to start over to do that. And if you start over, you're going to have a new set of problems that you could you right. could run into. Sometimes what's most helpful in a niche is knowing what kind of content isn't going to work. Um, so that's why in our in our first batches of content, our first 50 articles, we're kind of poking around trying different types of content um, and seeing what's going to work. You know, I would never recommend that somebody making a skateboard website writes 50 posts, you know, uh, Florida skateboarding laws, Georgia skateboarding laws, etc. Because what if you find out that that type of content didn't work that well? Mm -hmm. Let's write three states to get a good test there. Then let's write three tutorials on how to do tricks and then three things on you know fixing skateboards and things like that. Let's try a bunch of different types of content. If you see some that, hey, you know, I got a couple posts that took off and the rest of the site is dead, that doesn't mean your whole site is dead. That means you found an area that works. We're gonna have to double down on that now. The people that get early success have guessed correctly and guessed isn't the right word because right. there's skill to it right but they've done some things correctly in the search analysis to get where they are and they saw an early result most people aren't going to they're going to see a normal result that takes time some things work some things didn't but once you've learned those lessons you're going to be way better off yeah for sure all right cash for clicks um says uh going forward um do you think we could still earn a living on several mini micro niche sites or should we focus on one or two sites and try turning them into an authority site? So yeah, absolutely. I'm still seeing tons of very small niche sites that are working, definitely. The reason that we're focusing more on one or two large sites, mostly one, especially if you're starting, uh, is because that's what we're seeing working right now best with Google's algorithm where they're focused so much on authority. Well, let's just build some authority and then we don't have to worry about it, right? But there's also something to be said for diversif diversification. We don't just have one site, mm -hmm. we're building out others. I think we've probably gone too far. I think we probably have a few too, too many right now and we're talking about combining some of them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in, in general, I'm saying big site, but it doesn't mean you can't be successful on the small ones. Right. Short answer is it could work. That's right. All right, let's go to some of these live questions here. Um, okay. Okay, so Brian says, um, 
he says, if we're doing keyword research, um, are all of the following easy to beat out for new sites? Um, forums, Quora, Pinterest, et cetera. Well, yes. I, I mean, yeah, that's what we're looking for, mm -hmm. for low competition, right? Um, is it easy to beat for a new site? Not necessarily. I mean, sometimes Pinterest is a good result. Uh, if I'm looking for, uh, you know, uh, craft ideas, like actually a Pinterest board with just a bunch of pictures of cool different crafts, that's, that's not a bad that result. Is. Does it mean that uh, Google is going to show all Pinterest? I doubt it. That's a query that deserves diversity. You want to see a blog post, a video, a Pinterest board and stuff too. So you may want to write it, uh, but it, a Pinterest board is not always a bad result. Quora similarly is not always a bad result, especially if somebody's looking for advice where there isn't just like one clear answer and you do kind of want to read what a bunch of people have to think about it. Um, but generally, if I'm seeing Quora and forums, we're going for yeah, it. Yeah, you can beat it. Um, Okay, Mark says, uh, we posted a video about uh, achieving success not in 24 months, but in 12, if we could produce a lot of articles quickly. I think in that video we mentioned 150 uh, in three months. Is that really possible? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, could you do 150 by yourself in three months? Probably not. I, that would, wow, you'd have to be some kind of superhuman. Um, could you uh, could you do 90 of them by yourself and outsource another 90? Yeah. And that, and as we mentioned in that video, that's probably what you'd have to do if you're going to move that fast. But again, that's a very un uncommon result that in your first year, you're going to achieve a full-time income. And we've always been very uh, clear about that. Does it happen? Yes. Have we had more than one Project 24 member do that? Yes. Is it common? No. It's it that would be an incredible amount of work to really pump out to, to get that result. Right. But in general, the more volume you have, the faster you can succeed. Um, OK, uh, the Joe DeMofo scam <laughs> hmm, that ticked me off. I'm very sorry to hear about that. If anything ever happens in the community that doesn't seem right, immediately let us know. Uh, he, we banned him right away. Uh, very sorry for that. Um, would we consider knife up to be a micro site? No, that site had hundreds or thousands, a lot of mm -hmm. posts on it. Uh, Rick arms, who was here at the immersion program. Right. Yeah. Um, we had our first video conference with our mastermind group, uh, from the immersion on one of the things we we're stuck on is what's the ratios you would suggest for views to subscribers on YouTube to go after for a topic. Mm. Huh, good question. Um, you know, I don't know that there's any like gold number. Magic ratio. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're just looking for a number of number of subscribers that you can compete with. So the guy's got 5,000 subscribers and you're got a hundred. Eh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. His channel's a little older. You can compete with this guy fine. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the views, it's just how many would you be happy getting? If you got 10,000 views on a video over the course of a year, would you be happy? Then yeah, do it. Um, Rick was there uh, at the immersion program that we just had a couple weeks ago, which was super cool. Yeah. Um, and we pushed YouTube hard yeah. on everybody. We are really, YouTube is just doing incredible things right now for internet marketing. Um, MN Medic says, how do you know if a niche is too small and maybe not worth going after? Uh, for example, Snake Owner, how big do you expect, expect this site will eventually be at its peak? Um, well, our goal is always a thousand page views for every one article that we have. And that site has 200 articles on it. And so at its, I would hope to see 200,000 page views from that site. Um, right now, I would probably put us on track for getting there. Yeah. Uh, we're, uh, I think, 29 weeks in, I think is what I saw the other day. Mm -hmm. Or 29 or 30 weeks in. We're early anyway. Um, and it's at 42,000 page views a month. And the trend is just shows no sign of stopping. Um, so I would consider that right now, yeah, we're, we'll probably get there eventually. Um, especially because the bigger topics are the last ones to come, right? Uh, your pillar topics are more competitive. They're going to take longer to rank. And so, yeah, I, I think we're doing, I think we're on track for that. Um, 
you know, choosing the size of a niche is difficult um, because you say something like snake owner, is that the right size? Well, how big of content can you fill? Um, if you're one person, I feel like a snake type site, like pretty specific one type of pet um, is probably good. Yeah. I would even feel okay with you doing ball pythons, something like that. I think mm -hmm. that's great. Um, if you're going to be producing thousands of posts and you think, hey, this, my goal is full time income here, then maybe you're going to regret down the line that you were, you were pigeonholed to ball pythons. Because right. you can fill that niche. You could write literally everything. Mm -hmm. Somebody could Google about that. And so something to keep in mind, I, I have certainly see people who get to the point that they have a full time, they're ready to go full time and they feel a little tapped out uh, on, on what they've started their slide on. Now it's not necessarily a bad thing because, Hey, you got a good income and you're ready to start number two. But if you get there and you still have a lot of room for expansion, now you're writing on an established site for your second site, really nice advantage to have. Okay. Um, Inma says, I have a question about old posts before starting project 24, our site had 60 posts some good and not some not some not so good. Uh, I'm wondering what I should do with those posts. Optimize the old ones or stick to new posts. Okay, if if the posts are ranking, careful. Make little tweaks at a time. Uh, I, I've seen it plenty of times. I've done consultations with people where they said, I'm gonna go double down on my best content and they made significant changes to their top content and boom, falls out of the search rankings. So do be careful about tweaking too much uh, with your top posts. Um, if these posts are not ranking at all uh, and it's been over a year, at that point, I, my recommendation is, co is copy the paste onto a brand new post, paste it there and redirect the old one to the new one and totally rework that thing. If it's been a year and it's not getting any traffic, it's, it, it, I doubt it's gonna come up later. Um, Google's tested it. It doesn't like it. Start fresh. Uh, so that would be my recommendation on, on an old, on a established post. Um, okay. If a recommended products page isn't suitable for one of the items, is it okay to put Amazon links in post? Sure. It doesn't really, I mean, he's asking if it negatively affects SEO. No, you can definitely write posts with Amazon links in them. We recommend the recommended products page because it does keep the site from being too spammy, especially where in the Project 24 framework, we're writing a lot of non-monetized posts. And, and this does bring up something that we've been asked a couple times recently um, of just like, you know, how come you guys never don't recommend writing any best X for Y kind of posts? Yeah. And I said, well, we do recommend that. I, I definitely, we write them on our sites, but, I wouldn't write them on a new site, which is why you hear us frequently talking about that, of just when we go to a site that is just best X for Y, product recommendation, just over and over again, that kind of site I feel like is in danger with, with upcoming uh, algorithm updates and things mm -hmm. we're seeing from Google, that it's not looking good for that type of heavy affiliate site. So yeah, you should do them. We, we're just adding a batch of those to Dirt Bike Planet right now you know, the best helmet for people with big heads, best helmets for women, kids, etc. We definitely write those, but I don't want to do it in my first batch of content on the site. They're generally much more competitive. It looks very spammy and affiliate heavy. And so I like to start clean, organic, get some traffic, and then we can add lot. There's lots of those that we can add in later on. Right. Product reviews usually aren't the post to take off the most either and get the most traffic. So yes, uh, they they're the small piece of traffic that can bring a significant piece of income. So right. yeah, we should do them. Yeah, but just don't get crazy in the beginning. Just easy. Mm -hmm. um, Kyleen says, "What's the reasoning behind deleting the dates on posts? Would it be worth adding a plugin that deletes deletes dates after a year?" Yeah, I think so. Um, for a number of reasons, I don't know how impacts SEO, uh, especially as if we're, if you go in and you modify it and you have schema on your page to say, you know, date modified and date published, I think that's probably fine. And Google's not going to be concerned if there's a published date on there, if we have the, uh, the modified date. However, I definitely think it impacts users. 
uh, on old posts, like the number one comment is, is this still relevant in 2019? Uh, it really impacts the user experience. And so I just want to remove the date off those old posts. Mm -hmm. kind of prevents the problem. Um, okay, let's go to some of these questions that were submitted uh, in, the, in the forum. Okay. All right, let's look at a website. Cody, I don't know how to say your last name, Cody. Cody Orgil um, has a website, uh, Cycle Travel Overlord. Oh boy, here we go, guys. Let's see if I am going to be able to share my screen. This is new webinar software, <laughs> so it's always a little bit of an adventure. I think we got it. Come on, yeah, got it. All right. So, um, okay, we looked at this site, Cycle Travel Overload. I, at first I read it Overlord and I was like, what? <laughs> uh, so uh, I think it's, it's a fine niche to be in. Cycling, so cycling is a little bit um, of a funny niche because it's pretty easy to go biking. It's kind of like jogging or running mm -hmm. that we see a lot of sites on where just there are a lot of people who do it, but there aren't that many questions unless we're like really getting into, you know, the nitty gritty of mountain bike stuff. So I do see higher competition in cycling because there are a little bit fewer search topics. Um, but I think it's fine. You can definitely be successful here. We're just going to have to be more careful in our search analysis. Um, but this was the problem. You want to tell them about this? Yeah. So we always run into this with people and the hit list that they write and the articles they publish. Um, the phrasing in the title usually doesn't match what someone would search. Um, and so when you see a title like this, how does bicycle touring change your life? Um, you know, that's something that maybe could potentially go viral on some other platform. But as far as organic search on Google, people aren't going to search something like this. Um, so when it comes to questions that you need to answer, especially on response posts, uh, this isn't something that's ever going to really gain that much traction because it doesn't have those uh, similar words that someone would type into a search bar. Right. This is something you could share on social and maybe do okay, even though social isn't sending the traffic right. that it used to by any means. Uh, but for Google traffic, just you can tell this is something like, I have something to share instead of doing thoughtful search analysis, yeah. finding those cracks and filling them. Um, and so I, we did see that as we were looking through several of these, it feels like I have something to share <laughs> and not necessarily, I found a crack yeah. uh, of something that I think will have search volume, but doesn't have a lot of competition. I did that competition analysis and now I'm going to fill it. Mm -hmm. So don't write until you got your hit list. Got to get that hit list first. Yep. Okay, now stop sharing. Got it. We did it. Hey, it worked. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go back here. Uh, Nikki, any recommendations for beginner editing, uh, video editing for YouTube? The cheaper, the better. Um, we use Final Cut uh, for uh, our video editing on YouTube, uh, and I love it. We used to use Premiere, and it was just slow and clunky, in my opinion. It costs $300, but it's a lifetime license, which mm -hmm. is pretty cool. Um, whereas Premiere, you have to pay for every month. Um, there are others that are cheaper, especially if you're on Windows, like, uh, dang it, what's it called, Vegas? Yeah. Somebody yeah. was just telling us at the immersion program they liked it. Mm -hmm. Was it Vegas? Yeah. I think so. Um, yeah, that might want to be one to check out. There are also some free ones. Uh, you know, on, on Apple, iMovie is actually iMovie. decent. You can do a lot on iMovie, so something to check out. If anybody else has good recommendations, uh, oh, Peter's saying he likes Vegas. Oh, Mark's saying it is Vegas. Hey, we got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 100 bucks, it looks like. Oh, yeah, Davin DaVinci. Da Vinci. Yeah, there's a free version um, of DaVinci that is uh, a good one. So that a lot is of people like that. good. All right. Um, oh, okay. A couple of questions. A few people asked Matt, Elul, Elul, and Matrick Herrick. Um, <laughs> we're essentially asking about, about competition. Um, so here's something interesting. Uh, we hear frequently from people in Project 24 saying like, oh man, it's pretty obvious that there are four other Project 24 members in my niche. Um, and the reason is 
it's our fault because yeah. <laughs> we, we do outdoor sites. We've always done outdoor sites. You know, the photography, it was mostly the outdoors, the landscape kind of stuff. Dirt bike planet, knife up, uh, outdoor troop, uh, pontoon guide, and camper report, Out all, all of them. We do so many outdoors kind of websites that those end up being our examples mm -hmm. of things that we talk about. And so honestly, that's why it happens. Uh, it's because we're it, we we make the mistake of talking about that, and so it kind of pigeonholes people into what to what to create. You know, some of the largest categories on the web are like cooking, which uh, I actually think you could make a great cooking website in the cooking niche if you're smart with search analysis. If you're just spewing out recipes like everybody else, forget it. Uh, but you know that was the purpose of the Thai curry video. Uh, is uh, which, by the way, we're getting Ricky in that pool. Uh, <laughs> I texted him; he's on vacation with his family, which is why he's not here. But he's he's getting in the yeah. pool. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, that that's why it happens. Is we are pitching a lot of people, so we're trying to to cut, go outside of the box with the examples that we give, mm -hmm. um, because I don't think I've ever seen a Project Twenty Four member make a cooking site. Right. I could be wrong. Maybe I maybe I'm just not thinking one, but I don't think I've ever seen that. It's one of the largest categories on the web, mm -hmm. and so I think that's why we're seeing it. Um, you know, there have been other people, Pat Flynn, that have been teaching making niche sites and SEO for 12 years. Um, you know, and the web isn't full, so it, it's not. That's not the issue. The issue isn't that Project 24 is somehow going to somehow take over the web. There are literally 400 million. <laughs> active websites like paying the domain name every year they're active 400 million so project 24s is a teeny little drop in the bucket and the reason we see it is because we're all pigeonholed yep. in our niches mm -hmm. so we got to just think outside of the box if you see that a lot then just think um and there there are a lot of places to go okay um web three law says uh Okay, he went to submit his site for indexing, and Google says no index has been detected in robots meta tag. Is this a problem I need to address? I'm sorry for laughing. I, I don't mean to be demeaning. I know you're starting your website, and, and there are a ton of things, places you can you can be there. But yes, this is definitely something you need to address. Um, <clears throat> my guess is if you go into WordPress, I think it's under. Discuss privacy, general. I can't remember where that I, box is. I'm terrible at navigating. I can't remember, but, but it, it's in that <clears throat> general WordPress settings. There's a box that says it's worded in a confusing way, but it essentially says, you know, keep this from. It's under reading. Daniel yeah. uh, says, um, <laughs> uh, but it, essentially, there's a box that says, you know, don't index, don't submit this for search engines. I can't remember how they phrase it. Somebody will post it for us. Um, but yeah, make sure that isn't po isn't ticked. Some people will tick that box when they're first starting their website thinking, oh, it's not ready to be viewed by the public. And if you forget that box, it's never going to show up in search results. So be sure you address this before you move on with your site. Um, and just to be clear, we don't recommend clicking that when you're starting your site. Just leave it. Just let it make it always available. Yeah. Levi says the wording is discourage search engines from indexing this. Site. Ah, yeah. See how it's kind of tricky because the discourage makes it the negative. Um, it, it should just say like, do you want Google to index you? Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Snowy Frog says, what platform do you recommend uh, to use for selling video courses? Great. And we didn't address this in the. Uh, Info courses right. course that's coming up. We talked about, you know, pricing, how to choose the right product, mm -hmm. etc., all that kind of stuff. We didn't get to the nuts and bolts of like how to set it up because it kind of depends on situations. Um, my top recommendation, if you if your product can fit it, is send owl like send owl, um, S E N D O W L. Weird name, um, but it's just an excellent excellent shopping cart. So if you're doing an ebook, uh, audio guide, something like that, um, that's just simple purchase, download, you're done, use SendOwl. The reason I love them is it costs, it's cheap. It's like $9 a month um, and their shopping cart is pretty. You can, you can use Apple Pay with it so people can just ka-ching. Uh, 
Um, and it's just, it doesn't, I see, I hate shopping carts that have the big enter the coupon code uh, button on there. I, that really hurts conversion rates if they don't have a, a coupon code. So um, you be careful with which shopping cart you choose. A lot of them want a percentage of your sales, which heck no. Um, I much rather just pay for it each month. So send out is awesome if you're that. If you're doing something a little bit more advanced, a membership site, something like that, it can definitely be tempting to go with a platform, uh, you know, a, a Udemy, a, a Kajabi, a LearnPress, there are a lot of them. Um, I would just really encourage you to make it something that you can really control on your site. Um, I, I wouldn't want to play the Udemy kind of game uh, where I'm sending uh, everybody outside. Uh, John's asking what does income school use? So we use member press, which you've figured out. You can do some things on there. Every time I have to do something in member press, I, I just t texted Carissa and was like, how do I do this? <laughs> I, it, I, it's unnecessarily complicated in my mind, but it does work. Um, and it, it's like very solid software. We don't mm -hmm. have any trouble with it, but it's just, uh, you can tell it was made by a developer who didn't hire a designer. Yeah. Um, another one that I've used, that I use on improvephotographyplus.com, the membership site for improved photography, um, is called Member Mouse. And that one is more expensive. I do like it better than Member Press, super easy to use and rock solid. The reporting is a little bit funky. Uh, sometimes the numbers don't quite add up, um, but I, I think it's pretty good. Um, so the way Income School works is you're purchasing through Member Press. It handles the actual purchasing and everything. And then the display of the course, we're using Learn Dash to you know, display the pretty pictures uh, of each course and stuff so you can go through. Um, and I, Learn Dash, I think, is okay. There are some things I wish they would tweak to make it look a little bit prettier, but I think it's pretty good. Um, yeah. Uh, Benjamin Colburn. Uh, says, I'm in the middle of a Project 24 slump. We all get there, Benjamin. Yep. And I'm losing steam. Do you have any tips for this part of the process? What do you think? I mean, yeah, this is one of the biggest questions we actually get in the P24 community. Um, and first of all, just know that it's something that literally everyone goes through. Mm -hmm. um, because Google takes so long to rank your stuff. You're not seeing um, the rewards that your site should be reaping. Um, and so, you know, Ricky and I on one podcast, we gave the tip to, you know, take meaningful breaks, kind of like engage in some motivational <laughs> methodology. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I've never been in this slump yet because I haven't gotten to that point where my site reached that point. So what did you do when you reached this point on your very first websites? Yeah, I, I would focus on on your projects rather than the project's results. Mm -hmm. Just don't pay attention to that stuff. Where we get killed is when you wake up every morning and you refresh PayPal. <laughs> uh, I know why you're doing it. I do it. Um, it's just a natural thing for internet marketers to do. Everybody has their pet number. You have a number that when you sit down to work, I promise you go check that number before you get to work. Everybody post in the comments, admit it. What's your pet number? <laughs> is it page views from yesterday that you're checking? Is it Amazon clicks? Uh, is it your PayPal, somebody buying your product? You have your pet number. Um, Amazon affiliate earnings. We have our pet numbers. Um, and I get it. You want to check, but that kills your mental health. It really does. Like, you know, we see all these stats on, uh, you know, social media effect on mental health. Like this is mental health for internet marketers. Like if you let your workday start with, oh man, my page views were down yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, man, that's just going to kill you. If you see that too many times, you're just, ah, oh, it's just going to kill your motivation. So instead, what if you sit down and your motivation, your number is you know in your uh, your search analysis tool where you're marking how many posts each month and stuff. Make that uh, the thing that you're obsessing over, and you say, "Okay, my goal is 150 posts in the first year. I'm going to do this thing." Um, and you see that number because it's going to tick up every day. You can totally control that number, 100% control. 
um, over that number. Um, and so do that, make that something you're working on. Do a content warrior challenge for yourself, do that. You know, say, hey, I'm gonna produce 40 blog posts over the next 60 days. And when I'm accomplished, I'm gonna take a week off. I'm not gonna look at this thing for a week. And then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna produce 52 YouTube videos and I'm gonna schedule them out one a week for the next year. And then I'm gonna come back to the blog, you know? Um, when you focus on that, the things that you can actually control, you're gonna make some moves. But if you, you just wrap yourself in outcomes too much, mm, it's just, this isn't the right business to do. That. It's like, you know, it's like if you're trying to gain muscle and every single day you're measuring your bicep. All right. Every single day it's gonna say the same thing. And four months in, you're going to say, I think I gained a quarter of an inch. If I don't <laughs> squeeze the ruler as tight, you know, that's just how it is. Uh, it's slow progress over time that builds up. And so focus on the work. Focus on, hey, I lifted 50 pounds today. And yesterday I could only, or last week I could only do 45. That's progress. So, but I know you're going to have your pet number. I know it's hard to stop, mm -hmm. but I honestly think that's what would help. Okay, uh, Mark says, is it sand owl for selling courses? No, that's my Idaho accent. It is <laughs> sand owl, S-E-N-D owl, <laughs> sand owl. <laughs> um, all right, let's go back here to the questions. We have a bunch. Okay, yeah, Kyleen says, I was working 12 hours a day and got burned out. Taking a few days off and finding balance was very helpful. Yeah, and that's another thing. We talk about this all the time. The When you go full time, you think, yeah, I was only spending an hour a day and, so, and I got this much done. And so if I go eight hours a day, I'm going to get eight times <laughs> as much done. And it's just not even anywhere near true. Yeah. You maybe you'll get double done, even though you're spending eight times the amount of time on it. Um, but it's just very hard to be fully productive all the time. Mm -hmm. And for internet marketers, what ends up being the time suck is checking. You check stuff all the time. You're checking your Amazon, checking your page views, and that just mm, that's just going to murder productivity. Uh, and you get better at it over time. Um, over time, you sit down and you just go immediately into project. And then like, hey, what if once a month we do a report and we look at all our income and all our page views, it's gonna be so much better for your mental health because you're gonna see actual trends at that point. It wasn't like two or three down days and you thought my site's tanking. It's like, oh, in a course of a month, we can get an actual picture of what's happening. Yeah. All right, um, okay. Uh, oh, I can't pronounce, pronounce your name. Sorry. Jagjot Singh says, uh, does Facebook ads for promoting blog posts help to rank faster in Google? Probably not. I mean, I do think there's value to just seeing traffic on a post. I mean, uh, that Google just sees people are going there. Um, but I think you're going to far out spend on Facebook ads what you're going to reap in reward. Yeah. Um, some people are making it work where they write a very heavy affiliate post that is just high converting. We have a killer affiliate product. And then they're driving Facebook ads to that post um, and just forgetting about SEO. Uh, we're using it in, in addition to SEO. They're just paying for traffic to that post. It's the big leagues. Uh, paid ads is tough. Mm -hmm. Almost every time you do paid ads, you're going to end up spending more on the ad than you're getting in return. Uh, you got to get good at it if you want paid ads to work. When they work, it's wonderful. You're just trading, you know, your nickel for a quarter. Um, wonderful. But more often than not, you're going to fail at it. Um, so I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying, you know, I, I wish I wish we could just pay for traffic and then <laughs> beauty. I'm done. Right. You know but it's usually the traffic costs more than you're getting from it. Is Pinterest worth the time and effort of getting traffic? Such a timely question. <laughs> so I'm going to let I'm you just... talk about this mostly, Freddie, because you've been doing spearheading a big project for us. Yeah. So I, I want to introduce first, though, what, what our original vision was, and then you tell us what it became. Sure, sure. So um, we get 
asked in Project 24, what courses do you want to see next? Pinterest was number one. People wanted to see that. And so, you know, oh, I'm going to do the fancy share my screen again. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of a YouTube video we we're working on about Pinterest. Um, it is this. This is traffic to income or to improve photography over the last several years. 2014, almost a million. Then 600,000 in 2015, 400,000, 300,000, 200,000, 100,000. Pinterest traffic is dropping off a cliff, and it's not just us. Pinterest is getting smart like Facebook did years ago, just saying, hey, if we show them blog posts, they leave the platform, mm -hmm. and they're getting smart about it. So initially, when we started this project, uh, we I said, Freddie, why don't you go find the experts on Pinterest, people that are killing it with Pinterest. Let's find out what they're doing. We're going to record this big old interview series, and we're going to release it in Project 24 as this course because, honestly, you know, while we are seeing significant traffic, thousands a month from Pinterest, it's not something we're focusing on because it's so tiny compared to the search traffic. And so I said, figure this out. Let's see, let's see what happens. And in the end, <laughs> so here's what happened. We interviewed five people. And what we quickly found, first of all, was that they were all in like the top Pinterest niches. They were in cooking, they were in travel, they were in finance and couponing and mommy blogging. Um, and so those are primarily the people who are like really killing it on Pinterest. Like mm -hmm. they're getting all of their traffic from that platform. Um, and it's because so many of the people on Pinterest are women, particularly like stay at home moms. 93% yeah, of, of pins of re -pins, are yeah, from women. Are women. Not members, but pins. Mm -hmm. So they're the ones actually using it. Yeah. So any traffic that you actually get from Pinterest is going to be from that base. Um, so anyway, that was the first big takeaway um, that we got. The next one was that it's really turning from a social network to a search engine. Um, and so Pinterest is just rapidly changing um, to kind of have its own SEO. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, a lot of the people who used to be successful on Pinterest aren't seeing that same success anymore. And like Jim said, Pinterest, rather than pushing you away onto a different website, they wanna keep you there. Um, and there, we saw today just um, totally blatantly scrolling through the homepage, how they're um, doing all these different tactics to just keep you on the page. So mm -hmm. those are kind of some key things that you should know about Pinterest, but we'll be coming out with the uh, YouTube video here pretty shortly. And that's the key YouTube video. Yeah. As I mentioned <laughs> in the introduction, we ha we had very much planned for this to be a major course in project 24. Um, and in the end, you know, we, in fact, had a little debate. We were just like, ah, you know, they want this. We have good information. We have information to share with them. But in the end, we felt like, no, like, we can't just put stuff in Project 24 to put it in Project 24. I don't want people wasting their time on something that isn't going to give a great result. Project 24 needs to be the most reliable way to get the traffic to, to your website and to really succeed. And our strategy for our sites right now is not to get rid of Pinterest. It has value. And if you're in one of these niches, you should really go in on Pinterest because I think there is huge value if you're in cooking, fitness, fashion, um, though that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there's big value and you should do it. Um, if you're in those other things, um, outdoors, camping kind of stuff, you know, of course there are, there's camping content there and people are interested, but we just haven't seen the results ourselves despite we hired somebody to just pin, pin on Pinterest. Just that's what they do mm -hmm. at the creator studio. And, you know, it's produced thousands of page views, which some people would be excited by. But honestly, what we're seeing is like at our size, yeah, it's worth having somebody to can kind of continue on this. Uh, for somebody who's building their site, um, most of the time, my recommendation is start a Pinterest and do some where you have a piece of content that you think just really works. But I, I just think for most people, you should spend your time working on SEO. Mm -hmm. You should be creating content. 
Um, and that's as we've really analyzed it and looked at it, that's what we're gonna, that's our recommendation in project 24 is yes, it can work for people. And if you're in those niches, you should do it, but it wasn't really quite what we'd hoped to be. You know what we could do though? We could release the full videos of those interviews we did in project 24. Oh yeah. I didn't think about that. Maybe we should do that. That's we'll great. release those full interviews so that if you're in those niches and you do want to get in on Pinterest, we've interviewed the experts. So we'll have that for you guys. Uh, but we're going to do a YouTube video in a couple weeks. That's going to kind of lay out everything we learned, but you should know in the end, we're, we're mediocre on it. I, I, yeah. Whereas a few years ago, I would have been extremely excited about yeah. going for it. So yes. <clears throat> Uh, okay, several people saying uh, we should do this uh, webinar chat once a month. Big value, motivating. Team Project 24 rocks. <laughs> Chad, just for you, let's do it. I think I'm having fun with this. I think this uh, is great. Um, so let's start doing it. I think we'll we'll uh, make this a regular feature. Cool. And we will uh, keep posting them. I think we'll <clears throat> make the page for these be on the vlog page. We need to get to updating, updating those more anyway. So it'll just be where we have kind of these timely videos kind of things. Um, so we'll post the replay to this there, um, and then we'll start doing it. Also, somebody posted a suggestion saying we need an email list uh, for Project 24 so we can say when something is new there and not just in the community. Noted. Good suggestion. We should have been doing that before. Uh, but yes, that is something we need to be doing. So I'm going to ask Carissa to kind of start taking that over for us. Yeah. Because uh, we... we yeah, we're constantly adding stuff and we always post in, in the community and stuff, but it can be easy for things to get lost in there. And so I think some people just don't see uh, the new cool stuff that's right. coming out. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that everybody's getting all your value from it. Okay, cool. Thank you, uh, everybody, for being here. Um, I love seeing your energy. I just absolutely eat it up. Uh, the immersion program, we had many of you. Um, in there uh, here in Boise a few weeks ago. And oh, and it's just so cool to see. I, I see so many people who are like, eh, I'm starting my site and they do it for two weeks and fizzle out. And then in six months later, they're like, my site failed. And it's like, well, you didn't put in the work. Um, and I ah, that's just so demotivating to see that continually. So I love seeing you guys who are so into this. I'm seeing so many of you just dominating it on your sites putting so much effort into uh, in there. Um, I, I absolutely love it. And we have a cool uh, interview series coming up uh, with some of the successful members of Project 24 uh, who, are, who are gonna share some of their success and things they're doing. Um, but we have found that most of the time, people that are really succeeding start to get very secretive about their niche because they're protecting it. I totally get it, totally get it. Um, and so we're trying to get as many as they're willing to, to come on, even if they don't want to share their niche, that's totally fine. But just to share the motivation and tell people. Um, but thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. Love you guys. Thank you for all your efforts and uh, keep killing it. We'll see you guys.